All right, welcome everybody. If you'd like to put your name in the chat and where you're tuning in from, it's always very fun to see. I'm Lydia Campbell Mayer uh, with the Indiana Arts Commission. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and get us started. Okay, so today we are uh, talking about how to start a local youth poet laureate program. And I'm going to give you an overview of what to expect. We'll start with introductions from our presenters today. We have a very fabulous lineup of experts. Um, we'll follow that with uh, hearing from Achille Achillea McCain about starting the Gary Youth Poet Laureate Program. Uh, then we'll hear from Dr. Camille Davis on how to establish an official Youth Poet Laureate Program through a national um, affiliation. Then we're going to hear a uh, uh, poetry reading by Paige Rhymes, who is the inaugural Poet Laureate for Gary. And then we're going to move to a conversation with Paige and Curtis Chrysler about the role of the Youth Poet Laureate and the Indiana Poet Laureate. And that's Curtis, which you'll find out soon. And conclude with a brief Q&A. Um, so briefly, I want to introduce uh, the Indiana Arts Commission. <clears throat> so here at the Indiana Arts Commission, we're an agency of the state government, and we work directly with communities, creatives, and organizations to harness the power of creativity to strengthen Indiana. Our mission is to champion and invest in arts and creativity to strengthen Indiana's people and communities. And our vision is simple, although bold. We want arts everywhere, every day, and for everyone in Indiana. You can learn more about Indiana Arts Commission at indianain.gov slash arts. And we also have resources there um, for artists, for communities, for arts educators, as well as for arts organizations. So we hope that you also check out some of the resources available to citizens here. I want to start now by introducing the lovely Achillea McCain. Achillea McCain is the founder and CEO of the Gary Youth Poet Laureate Society. McCain is a 26-year career educator. As a speech-language pathologist, McCain has worked with young people from birth to 18 years of age. McCain is also a renowned lyric soprano. Later this fall, McCain will make her television debut as the, as the second annual classic Chrysanthemum Concerto airs on Lakeshore Public Media. I'm hoping to watch that. <laughs> so, McCain was inspired to found the Gary Youth Poet Laureate Society after hearing a podcast on the very first National Youth Poet Laureate, Amanda Gorman. Well, all three of my worlds converged, speech pathology, literacy, and the arts, said McCain. McCain said that if a young woman with a speech impediment has the courage to recite her original work on the world stage for President Biden's 2021 inauguration, then poetry can be used as a vehicle for young people in my community, end quote. Achillea McCain was named a cohort in the Indiana Arts Commission 2024 on-ramp Creative Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. In 2020, she was elected as first district representative of the Gary Schools Advisory Board. In 2023, she was appointed by the 21st Mayor of Gary to the appointed Gary Community School Board of Trustees and to the Gary Redevelopment Commission as a non-voting advisor. Her terms concluded on December 31st, 2023 McCain currently serves as an at-large director of the board of the Indiana Library Federation. McCain is married to her husband of 20 years, attorney Trent A. McCain, and they have three children. Thank you and welcome. <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce Paige Rhymes. So Paige was born and raised in Gary, Indiana, but later moved to the Miller Creative District where she discovered her love for the arts. Rhymes is not only Gary's first Youth Poet Laureate, but her artwork has been featured in museums across Indiana. She has competed in numerous poetry and art competitions, including those organized by the NAACP and at the state level. Paige also hosted her own youth-led poetry show called 
just because I love you at the Marshall J. Gordon, sorry, Marshall J. Gardner Center for the Arts, based on the poetry series she's been working on for a year. Now attending the School of Art Institute, Paige is focused on honing her artistic skills. You can support her by donating to her GoFundMe, which is for scholarship support, and I'll make sure to share it, or following her on Instagram at Paige the Artist. Welcome, Paige. Next, we have Curtis Chrysler, who is Indiana's Poet Laureate. Curtis L. Chrysler was born and raised in Gary, Indiana. Chrysler, an award-winning poet and author, has a new book called Doing Drive-Bys on How to Love in the Midwest. He has six poetry books, two YA books, and five poetry chapbooks. He's been published in a variety of magazines, journals, and anthologies. He's co-editor of Poetry for the Museum of Americana. He created the Indiana Chitlin Circuit and the poetry form called the Synastic. He's the Indiana Poet Laureate and Professor of English at Purdue University, Fort Wayne, PFW. And he can be contacted at www.poetchrysler.com. I'll make sure that I share all these links in the chat as well. And then last, but certainly not least, we're very excited to welcome Dr. Kamiya L. Davis. Davis is a poet, educator, and educational researcher with a heart for urban youth and communities. Her research focuses on youth activism, racial justice in teacher education, critically, critical collaborative ethnography, and critical poetic inquiry. Davis is the national director for the acclaimed Youth Poet Laureate Program, uh, an initiative of Urban Word, an award-winning youth literary arts and youth development organization. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all our lovely um, panelists today. We are very excited to have you all. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share. And we will start by welcoming um, Akilia. Uh, to take it away. All right, well, thank you so very much, uh, Lydia, for your your kind, more than kind introduction. Uh, and I'm just excited to be here with you all today and to share and to hopefully help you uh, that are attending if this is your desire to get a program up and running in your city. Um, well, some might ask why what was my interest or why did I focus in on the Youth Poet Laureate program? It was, it came into um, my knowledge, uh, Amanda Gorman, when I think we all saw uh, that speech and her poetry uh, at the inauguration of Joe Biden. And it was just, uh, she just sparked something in the nation. Her face was everywhere. Uh, everyone was hearing about her, her iconic look. <laughs> you know, I just saw that image everywhere. And when I came to find out that she was a student who received speech therapy, because as a speech therapist, when I was listening to her uh, give her speech or not give her speech, but recite her poetry, I did notice, wow, I hear something with her R's there. As a speech therapist, your ear is just trained for that. And I was just very proud of her because I said, wow, she doesn't care. It's not inhibiting her. And, and our goal as speech therapists is to encourage communication and to have people communicate in whatever way they can. So I just saw it as a real empowering moment. And it was on all of the chats and all of the speech therapists. We were all just bursting with pride to see her out there. So um, as it, it comes to, I listen to a lot of podcasts and there's a podcast that I listened to. And Amanda Gorman was the focus of this podcast. And I listened to them with my children to inspire them. And they really were excited about this one too, because they heard about something mommy does happening in the real world. It's, you know, not just this thing I'm talking about, speech therapy all the time. So um, I just came to, I'm also a, a lover of books, you know, from the beginning of time, I've loved to read. Um, I'm an avid, avid bibliophile. I'm 
typically reading three or four books at the same time. So it was kind of like everything was in the mix, you know, creating this stew that made this thing, me think that this was a possibility for me. So as I learned more about Amanda Gorman, I learned about the Youth Poet Laureate program. And then when I learned about that program, I learned about Dr. Camille Davis. And then I found out she was a Hoosier. And I just couldn't believe it. And then I found out that the, the next Indiana Poet Laureate was from my hometown of Gary, Indiana. And the prior Poet Laureate was from Indianapolis and Dr. Kimia Davis. It just seemed like, oh, this is just meant to be. I've just got to get this program off the ground. So I sent Dr. Davis emails. I think I just was worrying her. How do you do this? You know, just piling the questions on. Um, and, you know, I got this program up and running with her guidance and all of her help in a very short amount of time. It was like within six months of the idea, it was it was up and running. It had legs. And I had a team of people around me who were so eager to support me uh, in the pursuit of creating this nonprofit and encouraging literacy. As a speech pathologist, um, one of my biggest concerns uh, every day when I'm working with students is the lack of literacy across the country, in our community, it is just uh, exasperating. And if you're going to school and you can't read, you know, why are we there? So this was um, a way for me to also support those students who are very literate, who are lovers of words, all the kids who are rappers, though, all those people who are poets who don't really see themselves as poets, giving them an avenue into this world and giving them support. And with, with Dr. Davis's help, with Curtis Chrysler's help, oh, I just can't tell you how much support he provided me with as a poet out there, you know, at the top of his game. I, I just had a lot of help. And so I quickly was able to get things off, off and running. So um, this year, Urban Word celebrates its 25th year anniversary. So they've been around for a while. Um, they have lots of supports in place. Uh, as a new person seeking to create this program, they can really hold your hand and guide you through step by step. Everything is laid out in documents. If you have questions, Dr. Davis is so available to you to answer those questions so that you can make sure that you do all that's necessary to establish a strong program. Uh, they do have their own requirements. So I'm just so excited to have named our first Poet Laureate. She is an absolute talent, as were the other two uh, poets who were first and second runner up. They were fabulous as well. Uh, we've got some great programming that we've uh, created. Uh, we're excited to learn more and just provide our, our new young poet with all the supports that she needs. And uh, I'm just happy to share whatever I can to support you all out there who want to do the same thing in Indiana, because we certainly have a lot of Indiana skin in the game. A lot of people from our state who are intricately involved in this programming, which is a, a national program. Thank you so much. I love the Indiana love happening here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I would like to welcome Dr. Camille Davis to the virtual stage here. And I'm also going to go ahead and share a screen. Excellent. So excited to be here. Um, all of the remarks made me remember my own trajectory. Grew up, born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. And maybe like 12 or 13 really began being interested in poetry. And at the time, there were not many youth programs. So I would kind of sneak into the adult places and they would say, you can sit here, but don't touch the alcohol. <laughs> so I'm so excited to see us build something for Indiana more broadly for young people to navigate poetry. And then also, I, because of that experience, I became an English teacher. 
and taught struggling readers at Indianapolis Public Schools. And I found that poetry was a an invitation into literacy where students struggle. Poetry was something so accessible and something they could use, which then sent me to wonder, like, how can we make school feel the way that poetry made me feel? And so that's why I um, went the PhD route and chose to study, in fact, the U Paul Laureate, because I knew that it wasn't just poetry, but there was so much else happening. Literacy, civic engagement, social and emotional healing, all these great things were happening in poetry spaces that weren't exactly happening in my classroom as a teacher. So I was curious about that. Um, and then came back in my ethos of return what you know to the people. I brought all of my data back to Urban Word and they said, hey, you know more about this than we do. Would you like to work here? So this job, I didn't even know it existed at the time, but it was just really connected to who I needed to be. And then another really, really interesting thing, the 2022 Youth Poet Laureate of the United States was Alyssa Gaines, who is from Indianapolis, Indiana. And as a fourth grader, she participated in the things I was doing as a teacher. So I think the connections just continue for Indiana. Um, and I was so proud to see Indiana at the national stage that year. So currently, I'm the National Director of the Youth Poet Laureate Program, um, and our program seeks to elevate the voices and experiences of young poets that are also committed to civic engagement. So our program focuses on three pillars, literary excellence, civic engagement, and social impact. And this little collage has, of course, Amanda Gorman, who was the very first Youth Poet Laureate ever, um, before she was the inaugural poet for the Biden administration and then several other of our young people. We can go to the next slide. This gives a little background on the program. Um, as was mentioned, our organization is about 25 years old, but this program has been established since 2008, and it started locally in New York City with several of the national partners, like the Academy of American Poets. We have um, support from the Library of Congress, the Poetry Coalition, and the National Park Service. So a lot of people were excited about this idea when it started in New York. And then through all of our connections, like we're talking now, how connected we all are across the country, it started to spread and spread and spread and spread. And to date, we have about 100 programs in different cities, counties, and states. And we actually have three international programs now. So we have a state initiative and an international initiative that I'm not the leader of because I'm doing all the hundred, right? Um, but my colleague is also leading that. So this is a program that has a lot of value to communities. And I'll say that we are the most featured poetry program in the United States when you look at any metric for media. So we're really proud of that. And I, we're also one of the most diverse programs. So we have students from every walk of life, every community, social economic status, rural to urban. So we just have a poet for every context and we're really proud of that. Next slide. That's basically what I just said, all the people, all the places, how our young people identify over space and time. Um, and also I think what's significant about this program is a lot of our partners choose to do it, but they already have something else they're doing in literary arts. And the title of a laureate ship, which our laureate that's here today might be able to tell you, like it comes with some esteem, right? In most places, it's linked to the local government, so it gives some access in ways that a traditional poetry slam or open mic might not. And we knew that, and we chose to leverage it. So we wanted to give this platform to young people to be instigators on civic stages and not just in local coffee shops. So we also use that to talk about our impact. Next slide. So how do you start a Youth Laureate program? I am your person to help you support starting the program through Urban Word. So what we do is we offer a model that can be adapted and modified. We have all the resources from curriculum content to rubrics for judging, and then my support as a colleague, because some places there might be a team of people doing this and other places it might just be one person. So we are here to support you regardless of the bandwidth that you have. And then we help initiate the local program. So we provide all the branding, and you also are associated with the national brand, which gives a lot of credibility to the local programming. And we just ask the one, the three things that really anchor everything that we do is this notion of, this one says artistic excellence. Sometimes we lean into this, the literary bit of it, but artistic excellence, literary excellence, civic engagement, and social impact. And this is how we talk about our program. And next, I'll tell you like our concrete steps to work with Urban Word to start this licensed program. Next. 
So how it works is this meeting typically is uh, just myself and the organization having this conversation. I'm just outlining what the process is to them, but you all have some insider networking here where you have access to this in this group format. So we talk and we make sure we're a good fit for each other. And then if we are, we secure licensing and launch. There is a fee for the program and there is a license. So if you think about any other kind of branded thing, you would be an owner of your piece of that brand. So the Gary, Indiana, you put Laureate, the Indianapolis, you put Laureate. So each city, and it depends on where you live. In California, they're organized a little differently, but city or county, you host a title, which means next week when someone calls us and says, hey, we like to start the Gary, Indiana, you put Laureate, because they saw something that Paige did, we will say no. There actually is a program you need to connect with these folks and be a part of what they're already doing so that helps us maintain the value of the program and the integrity to the brand and we try to partner with the organizations that have the greatest bandwidth in their area so they can offer it to as many young people as possible and then build strong partnerships locally we create a logo for you um, the fees are based on a sliding scale based on organizational budget annually we don't want it to be a barrier to entry, but of course, all these things cost money. So we try to subsidize that with a sliding um, scale fee. And then we do a program launch, which includes announcement of the event and a workshop, which we have all of that templated out and I can support with that. Then there's a submission period. And then our final event, we call it a commencement because it's more than an open mic and it has a bit of pomp and circumstance. And we want your local officials and the poet laureate, the adult laureate of your area, all those folks to come out and speak. And then we celebrate this young person and put them on a civic platform that we call a commencement. And then we invite you all locally to organize ongoing mentorship of the youth poet laureate. Because again, this is a youth development program and we are elevating incredible young people and we know they are still in process. So we want this to be a learning exercise for them to be able to partner with an adult laureate or partner with someone that's more experienced to help them develop their craft over time. And then one of our big, um, I don't know, access points is that the youth poll laureate, once they earn your local title, they are eligible to apply for both regionals and nationals. And as I mentioned, we are starting some international engagement. So this year we have students from Pakistan that are engaging with the youth poll laureates for the U.S. and they're having conversations across context. We think it's really important and strong for young people to have access to friendships and relationships outside of their lived experience to build their criticality and their writing. Next slide. So this kind of outlines in a four to six months window what we would like to see and how we support you. So we support you with that launch event, well, the first thing is the meeting, the fees, all the logistics, which would just be myself and whoever the program coordinator is. And then we start preparing behind the scenes, the calendar, the branding, organizing how you'll roll everything out. And then in the program offerings, you do that announcement, application workshop, and a judging period and a commencement. And that's at the very lowest level. In a minute, I'll show you some other models that we do as well. And then ongoing, ongoing engagement with the laureate. And one thing that I'd like to mention here is that if you have a small bandwidth or you don't have a lot of staff, Urban Word as a national organization, we also offer workshops for all the youth poet laureates virtually where they are in conversation with poets like Ada Lamone and Demez Smith, some of the most notable poets in the field right now. And we are subsidizing that for you. So as part of your licensing with Urban Word, your laureate gets access to all of that mentorship at no additional cost. And then we also have... Um, ongoing craft workshop right now called In Scene, where the poets are studying movies and videos and how their writing is in conversation with those. What else are we doing? Oh, we actually um, had the opportunity to go to the White House in this year, in February. We took our National Youth Poet Laureate. I should have started with that. Her name is Salome Akbaroji for 2024. And she went to the White House and she read a poem in the West Wing and made a big splash on the internet. But more importantly, we were able to partner with the Department of Education federally to bring several youth poet laureates out to inform local policies. And as a part of that, we received a grant to pay youth poet laureates to organize in their local communities. So we have, I think, 20 different projects happening across the United States. And there's workshops to go with it and they get money to do the event in their local community. 
So this is one example of how partnering with Urban Word gives your program more bandwidth and more access. And Paige, I'll just say, since you're here, you should be a part of it. Oh, I'm not sure if you got the emails, but we are working really hard to garner resources and spread it out across the country to all of our partners and to amplify more young people's access and opportunities to do civic engagement and poetry. And that's what our process would look like to engage with us. And if you needed more time, you could definitely take more time. But typically from the initial conversation, we see about four to six months before a person is. Next. So what I just described was like the baseline entry but if you have more bandwidth and you have more staff or more dollars to support you, we do have other models. For example, New York City is our oldest program where we run a federal hall fellowship. Federal hall is in New York City. And so we take our Youth Poet Laureate applicants there once a week to do a workshop where they're studying civics, they're studying poetry and the intersections between the two and activism. And they're in this really historic place. So they have this really cool experience. And it's subsidized by the Parks Foundation because Federal Hall is a, a national park. So they get to have that experience in a cohort model. Then they do the application. And then a youth poet laureate is selected. And they continue in their cohort for future engagements throughout the year, which we think, if you're able, it does strengthen the model a bit. So it's not about just one exceptional young person, but it emphasizes community. We don't require this. We don't tell people they have to do it because it requires a lot more bandwidth and resources. But this is a model, and we do have other models where I can talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to do something a little different or in subsequent years, you started off with the baseline, and then three, four years later, you're like, we're ready to engage young people more. These are some ideas of things you could do. Next slide. And that's it. Our program team looks forward to supporting your launch. Again, we would like to make sure that our partners are just right fits and we are for you. And then if once we make that determination, we can work through all the logistics together. Here's our website where you can click the become a partner link and it asks you a few different questions to just assess your readiness and alignment with our model. And then we begin the process. And overwhelmingly, we're just so excited to get this program into different communities because it amplifies the genius and the brilliance of young people that are already there. We know they are there. We just want to give them the mic, to give them the space, um, and then garner the adults in that community around a way to celebrate this kind of young poet that's interested in their community. So I'd love to answer questions later. Thanks so much. And we hope that Paige goes to the White House with us for the Youth Policy Summit. <laughs> we do too, we do too. All right, and now Paige, I wanna turn the mic over to you. Um, did you wanna start with the reading or I will let you go ahead and, and take charge? Yeah, um, I can definitely start with the reading. Um, so hello guys, my name is Paige Rhymes and um, I will be reciting a poem that I recently wrote called Maybe It's My Fault. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe if I didn't look you in your eyes or allow our hands to touch. Maybe if I didn't stay on FaceTime with you all night, giggling and <laughs> kicking my feet as the high you gave me ran through my body like Chills. Yeah, maybe it's my fault that I mistook your words for love. I took the jokes we cracked and smiled. I missed them. And yeah, maybe I knew the drink you poured was poison. Maybe I drunk it on purpose. You made the feeling of death feel so warm and inviting. The feeling of false love was better than real. Maybe I thought I deserved the fake more than the real. Maybe it's my fault. I didn't give myself more time to heal. I rushed it 
I pushed, pleaded, begged for real love. But when it was offered, I sipped from a poison cup because the burn of poison reminded me of home. And your love was something my house lacked. I don't deserve you. I never did. So maybe it's my fault that this knot is forming in my stomach and the poison is starting to take its toll. Thank you. We need a snap emoji here. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so much, Faith. No problem. Well, I also want to, um, to have the opportunity to just hear a little bit from you about your experience as being Gary's inaugural Youth Poet Laureate. Um, what's it been like and anything you'd like to share? Um, it's been really, like, really nice, actually. Um, I love saying, like, oh, you know, I'm Gary Indiana's first poet laureate. Or, um, like, my friends, like, text me, I, I saw your billboard. Like, I just drove past your billboard. You're on a billboard. Um, it's really, really nice. And not even just, like, the fame part of it, but just, like, a milestone for me, like, as a poet. Like, before I went to the competition to um for the poet laureate thing, I had started my own poetry show and, you know, I made that series and it was just like a goal for me to like do something with poetry, um, whether it's just, you know, going to poetry slams or something public. I just wanted to do something in that field and everything just happened in like a perfect way because when I went to the competition, I had already had plenty of experience with poetry and, you know, I was already doing competitions and everything. And so everything just happened so fast. And when they were like, oh, you know, they gave, they were like, oh, you won. I was like, I don't know. It just didn't click until I started like reaping the benefits of it. And um, yeah, I've, it's been like a role that I've learned to grow into because at first I was like, um, like I was expecting like assignments or like something with the name, like, okay, I, I'm youth poet laureate. So they're going to tell me to go here, there and there and everything. Then I was like, they shouldn't have to tell you anything. Like you should be able to go to poetry slams and, you know, do everything like you've been doing, you know, do the right thing, do what, you know, you've been knowing to do. Don't wait for someone to be like, do this, that and the third. Because if you, it's not really going to, it's going to get you places, but you have to have your own drive. So I've just learned to like grow in the role and um, maybe like sometimes use my title to like get me places and just like to get me in um, the spots that I want to be in. Like, for example, um, the movie that I'm going to be in in a week or two, um, it's a poetry movie in Gary, Indiana. And it's going to be with me and other poets. And I'm also going to be on the stage um, painting. It's a movie um, by Andre Rene. Um, and it's like a very, very, very exciting experience for me. And I just, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really proud and happy that I got the opportunity to not only be Poet Laureate, but to also like help other kids in like my situation. We're just writing poetry for fun and wanted to do something with it. I liked being able to mentor to other children or like other people just in my, like my age or whatever that need an outlet or need to like know what to do with their talent. So yeah, that's my take on it. Thank you so much. I'm wondering, Akelia or Dr. Davis, do you have any questions for Paige? I'm kind of putting you on the spot before we switch to talk to Curtis. Um, Paige, what are you looking forward to doing with your platform as it relates to other young people accessing poetry 
throughout the year as the youth poet laureate of Gary? Um, I'm really just looking forward to bringing other young people to like understand that you can do something with poetry that's not just like poetry slams. Like of course poetry slams are great and they like, you know, help you gain some experience. But if you wanted to do it like a professional level or you wanted to do like take it a step farther, there are routes that you can take and there's routes that you can, you know, if you really want, want to do the work and you really want to be, you know, driven to do it, you can do it. So I just, I'm really excited to be able to show, you know, other young people how to do it, I guess. It's really awesome to have you here. And you mentioned the billboard. I didn't explain that, that picture on the thing. I'd love to hear a little bit about what it was like to see your face on a billboard. That's such a big deal. And so cool to see poetry elevated this way. Yeah, it was... It was very exciting, like, before the billboard was even put up, like, um, Akelia, she had let me know. She was like, hey, like, you're going to be on a billboard. And I was like, like, it was, like, shocking. And I told my dad, because my dad is also a poet, and he helps me through all of my competitions. He's like, Paige is really big. And then when it happened, it was like a billboard, right, like, coming out of Miller, Um all the people from the art district that was like supporting me that, you know, sent me the poet laureate competition. They were like, Oh my God, you did it. Like you made it like you're on this billboard. And I was getting, you know, texts from the people who were like walking me through it, walking through my um, first poetry show at the Marshall J garden center. And they were like, Oh my God, like you're, you're in Miller and you know, you're doing art, but you're actually like achieving what you said you wanted to do a year ago and it was like really refreshing but also like really encouraging to know that if I'm driven enough and if I want it bad enough I can do it so yeah I just wanted to share too something that Paige is uh she's hinted at a bit but she's a multi-talented person you know she's an artist in many different facets She's a painter. Uh, she so she loves to create in that manner, and she's also this poet. So uh, my goal was just to elevate this this talented youth in our city who loves words, who uh, is not the stereotype. You know, that this is a lover of words. She's a painter. She's a creator. She's doing all types of fabulous things. And these, we want to support her and elevate her. And to show the other children, I recently organized a, a college tour, um, maybe about six months prior. I met poets on that uh, college tour. Uh, and so it's like these kids are out there. What are we doing to support them and to show them that we really do value that talent, that that's something beautiful to be able to paint a world through words, to create poetry through word, words. As a speech pathologist, that's our goal. That's the ultimate of communication. When you can give someone a whole visual world of your internal thought and feeling through the power of the word choices you make and the, the play with words, the alliteration, all of that is so very important. And that's the highest elevation of language and communication. So whatever I could do to elevate that in my community was my goal. And so Paige, you know, she presented her work and it was beautiful. And so we were all just so happy to support her and to continue to support her in any way that we can. Dr. Kamia Davis and I are all ready working on a little something <laughs> right now. So, you know, whatever opportunities are out there, we want to grab them and, and present them to you so that you can continue to soar and do what you're destined to do and express your talent at, the, at, at its fullest. That's our goal. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's really, I'm very impressed. You know, I looked at your Instagram. I shared that in the chat too, just of how multi-talented you are, Paige. And um, I I want to just 
thank you for doing that work and thank you for for showing folks how um creativity is so important in our yeah. lives um yeah I want I want, to I'm sorry yeah. go ahead no, I'm sorry going, I, cut yeah. you off. I just wanted to um thank you for this opportunity and thank you for you know setting everything up this is great this is an amazing opportunity and I'm really happy to be a part of it oh my gosh pleasure is all mine <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I also want to invite um, Curtis into the conversation here, who is um, Indiana's Poet Laureate. So um, I think Paige will probably be in this position in the future. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. Um, so Curtis, would just like to share a little bit about yourself and, and your role and, and what it means. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so happy for Paige. Always happy for Paige. Always uh, the wings beneath her wing, so to speak. Uh, loving what she's doing with the, uh, I think I would just say, I think with the multifaceted aspects of creativity that she's in, they overlap in places. And it's the only way I can kind of explain it is like she's speaking different languages. And so you have the poetry, you have uh, the artwork, you have her doing movies. These are three different genres of creative expression that are very beautiful and come with their own aspect of narration in them. Uh, poetry is, you know, word pictures. And those word pictures can play into the artwork and vice versa. So she can be having her books with her own artwork on the uh, cover of her books. You know, and most people can't do that. They're waiting for the publisher or someone to do that. So she's she's killing it. So I just want to say that um, as Indiana Poet Laureate, I'm trying to meet people where they are uh, with the pop up Indiana Children's Circuit. So the aspect of what the Children's Circuit does goes back to what the Children's Circuit was at the beginning of the Children's Circuit, uh, where you had Jim Crow laws in place where blacks and whites couldn't perform in public, uh, but they did perform in juke joints, after hour joints and things of that nature. So you would see a big spider back in Louis Armstrong, three o'clock in the morning in Chicago playing together when they couldn't do it, you know, uh, in, in daylight. So um, what the chilling circuit is, is it was a place just kind of like the, the Green Book, where there are safe places for Black people to go. The Children's Circuit was that as well, where Black artists and creatives like Paige could go and they get a little money, uh, they get fed, they can uh, jam with the people who are hosts and then be uh, given a premiere. And then, you know, if they needed a place to stay for the night, they could do that before they go on to the next place. So it was it was it was just trying to get entertainers to be out there. And and so I'm doing that, but I'm doing it with poetry. So we do this thing where the first part is we introduce each other, and then we have a 20-minute round robin where the first person sets up everything. And this is the most horrendous thing for a poet to do because we have set lists and it's like, okay, I'm going there. I'm going to read this, 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 and this, and this blows that all to crap. It's, it's so, uh, and it's so in the moment and everybody, every time I do this, everybody says I'm stealing this. And I'm like, please take it with you, use it for good. And so that first 20 minutes is just feeding off of that first poet. So if that first poet said, has a poem about love in Gary, Indiana, it's like, oh, I got a Gary, Indiana poem. And I'm, you know, I get up to the mic next and we're just feeding off each other for 20 minutes. Then you have, after that set, we have a, a 10 minute solo set, each person goes. And then we read, the next set is we're reading a poem by, uh, Indiana, well, the first time I did it, I did Lucille Clifton's Won't You Celebrate With Me. But since then, I've been doing all Indiana poets. So we've been doing uh, Knight, Mari, uh, and now we're going through the Poet Laureates. So 
to put to pull them in this too. And then we have an open mic or a Q&A or something of that nature. Sometimes we put music into it. So it's a really cool thing. I've been in colleges, K through 12, backyards, centers, uh, just did proof, uh, Midwest Lit Fest on top of a roof, which is really so, it was such a great night uh, to do that. And so I'm looking at engaging with as many Hoosiers as I can, advocating poetry with literary activism. And when I think about Amanda Gordon, Biden, and we just lost James Earl Jones, all of them had were stutterers. And all of them use poetry or the written word to become who they are and think about that, you know? And and so it, it's it's this thing that poetry can help you overcome those so-called disabilities that you may have with language and then get you to a place to where your voice can come out of that. And when you have your voice, as Paige has her voice, there's no stopping you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Curtis. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to open it up now to to anybody for questions. You can throw them in the chat. Um, and I, I have some. You're welcome to ask any of our panelists here today. Um, I'll give it a second. But maybe as we're, we're getting started, I'd love to just hear a little bit more about kind of um, the intersections between poetry and civics that Dr. Davis mentioned. And so I'll open that to anybody. Um, who, who feels compelled to, to answer. Well, I'll begin. I just feel that poetry is one of the most accessible arts out there. It only takes paper and pencil or pen and that's it there there are no barriers there aren't the barriers that they are that there are with so many other art forms where you have to gather the materials or you have to be you know dressed a certain way it's just so accessible and that's what i feel the as a speech pathologist i'm also an opera singer it's just the power of language the power of language to communicate, to share your thoughts, to, as, as a therapist, one of the most important things that we work on uh, to be an effective communicator, you have to have great theory of mind. And that means that I think about how other people think and feel, and I shape my communication so that they can actually hear what I'm saying and perceive what I'm saying. You can't say the same thing to every audience and expect them to understand you. You have to perceive and see that person from who for who they are and, and shape your communication to fit. Like for example, with students, you know, when I'm working with young children, we say, you're not going to speak to the principal the same way you speak to your peers or even the same way you speak to a close friend, you have different languages and different ways of communicating in each of those settings. And so with, with civics, uh, I ran for school board and was elected to school board and it was all about communication for me. It was all about giving these kids access to communication so that they can, you know, have access to the curriculum so that they can live their fullest life. So communication, poetry, language, art, music, it's all about giving people access to live their fullest lives so that everyone really sees each other for who they are. And then that creates more empathy. That's an empathetic person, a person who's going to make the best decision for all, not just for some. So it's about transforming how people think and feel and how we treat each other. And that's the civic kind of responsibility. I feel as a speech therapist, when I'm teaching children to communicate, it's about giving them a voice. And that's what a vote is, giving, do you have a voice? 
Can you speak? Can you advocate for yourself? There's all kind of public law that was created around having access to the curriculum as a special needs children. You know, we might have to do something else. That's the same thing when we talk about equality and equity. It's, it's not the same thing. So all of those kind of just, in my mind, they're intertangled. They're interconnected. And when you give people access and voice, then you just get a better world because everyone is represented. And that's what poetry does. It gives us that read into other people's minds and feelings so that we can really see them. That's what's so wonderful about poetry to me. When I hear it, like, ah, I felt that before, but I've never heard it articulated. Someone else has too. Wow. You get that aha over and over and over of these deep internal thoughts that you just don't think other people may have, but they do. So that's that's my perspective on your question. Thank you so much. Yeah, I can see the, the impact. Thank you so much. Um, any other questions from the audience? I don't wanna, I know we've got a smaller group today. We had several people who, um, who are hoping to join into the recording. So there'll be a, a post host of that audience too. So thank you so much um, for your time. I want to ask maybe just um, one question to you, Akelia, about kind of the the basics of starting this program. Is there any advice you can give to folks who might be wanting to start a local program to, to raise funds, to kind of get the right people together? Any, any advice you could share? Uh, I just think whenever you're beginning something like this, you have to really know what it is, what you're getting into. Uh, Dr. Davis does a good job of really explaining what the program is, all the different iterations and uh, what is going to be required of you. You know, there is a bit of a vetting uh, to the process. So just know that, you know, it's, it's something serious and just be prepared to put in some time, but it's well worth it. Um, I also think that it's important to um, just be prepared to search for grants and look for funds. I you know, have applied to so many different programs to support the Youth Poet Laureate so that, so that we can have the commencement, so that we can you know, give our poets uh, some monetary gifts uh, you know, the, everything costs. So just know that that'll be an, another avenue that you need, need to think about financially, uh, how you will just get things done. We had a fundraiser um, that you mentioned earlier, um, an opera concert, uh, and we were so graced with having the Indiana Poet Laureate Curtis Chrysler create a poem just for our event and share it for the first time at this event. Um, it was also uh, captured by PBS, recorded by PBS, and it will be uh, aired on PBS. So we're just trying to do all that we can to spread uh, the gospel of what we're doing, to let the community know we're here. Uh, and then another thing, just surround yourself with great people who are more knowledgeable than you. I always want to be around people who are smarter than me, than me, than, and know more than me, who can guide me and help me through this process. Uh, Paige and Curtis are in communication with each other. He's a poet out here really doing this. That's who she needs to be talking to and, and you know, getting advice from um, and just having a people in your community that are dependable, that you know, that are already doing the things that you're aspiring to do. Surround yourself with, with great folks. And, and that's all the ingredients that it took for me to be able to get the program off the ground. Thank you so much. I'm definitely feeling surrounded by people much smarter than me today with all of you here. Um, I know we want to be mindful of time, but I also just want to give you all a chance to share any final thoughts, any any recommendations you have. So um, can I start with you, Curtis? Then we'll go to Dr. Davis and, and end with you, Paige, if you feel comfortable. 
Uh, I would just say uh, there's, uh, as Achilles said, there's there's everything costs. So there's money out there. What the Pop Up Indiana Children's Circuit does, we put a little money in their pocket, and we because my whole thing is people tend to put poetry on the back burners, and he's like, oh, they're a poet. Can you come here? And they never want to pay you anything. So it's not like I can. I'm I'm applying for grants to help with this expenditure, but everything is coming out of what I'm getting from uh, uh, my paycheck with the Indiana Arts Commission and things like that. But the Indiana Arts Commission, Indiana Humanities, there's all these different places that you can find through schools, through uh, government grants, uh, state grants, federal grants, there's free money out there. You just have to go through the rigmarole of getting to it. But when you get it, it's money that you don't have to, a grant is a money, you know, you don't have to pay that back. It's not a loan. So there's monies out there for these things to happen and uh, to get programs started. And uh, and as we see, Paige has even started stuff before she became the Gary Youth Poet Laureate. So there's ways to, to address things. It's just, how are you doing it? And like uh, Achilles said, surrounding yourself with greatness. Um, I will conclude with, please visit our website to check out what's happening at the national level. And then the ethos that listening to Curtis share, I think all of my vision for these poetry programs is that we would have poets infiltrate every sector in our society. So the president and the mayor and the teachers, they will all be poets and they will bring that sensibility to the work that they do, which I think will really change the world. Thank you all. Um, and for, you know, my spill on this, um, I would like to say like, if you wanna be an artist, whether it's poetry, photography, um, painting, look within your community, because especially like in Gary, I feel like not a lot of people think that Gary supports like artists or maybe they don't know about the opportunities in Gary, Indiana. But I would say like research before you go like, you know, somewhere outside of your community, like look within your community first. And um, if you don't, you know, have any like ways of um, getting to your community or you don't have anything within your community, um, please, please feel free to email me or um, DM me because I'm, I really love bringing um, artists to the um, Marshall J. Gardner Center or just to like different avenues to get you started at least. And I will lastly say be patient because um, I've only been doing art for maybe two two years maybe less than that and I've gotten to the point where I am but only because of the community that I was in like I would not be in this position without having the art community or having um people around me smarter people as y'all would say smarter people that know more around me to get me to the point that I am so I would say be patient you know keep that drive keep keep going keep going at it because it's really going to be beneficial to you in the long run. Thank you so much. And Akilia, I'm sorry, I didn't give you an opportunity to share any final thoughts. Would you have anything else you would like to leave us with today? Oh, I just would share the, the power of the word, just believe in the power of the word. And uh, I'm excited whenever I learn a new word each day. So just keep reading, keep writing poetry. I think it'll make the world a better place. Thank you. And I would also like to see poets everywhere, Dr. Davis. I love that vision. Thank you all. This concludes our, our conversation for the day and I will make a recording available to people um, and share links to your web pages as well in the follow-up email. Um, thank you again for all your time today to Curtis, Dr. Davis, Dr. Camilla Davis, Paige, and to Achilia. Um, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>